Hey kids, Ms. Kulkani here. We are going to begin today with our unit 2 in chemistry. And this unit is called chemistry calculations. So let's see what all things we are going to cover in this unit. The main thing we are going to learn is about the new units in chemistry. We are going to also talk about SI units and some common units. Then we are going to talk about some conversion in temperature units and the main units which we will be talking about is Celsius and Kelvin. Then there is scientific notation, a very important part of chemistry calculations. Then we talk about significant figures or I call it as sig fig, that's my pet word for significant figures. Then we talk about the dimensional analysis and then a little bit of density calculations. So let's begin with our chemistry calculations. Okay, so this is the first part. We are talking about different kinds of measurements used in chemistry. Now all over the world scientists need to have some commonality in units. So what they do is they decided to have a common system for measurement in chemistry and this is called as SI system. SI stands for System International. So these units will be common. In olden days it was also referred to as MKS system but nowadays we only call it as SI system. Now there is some hint with MKS because M stands for meter, K stands for kilo and S stands for second. So I'm just giving you a hint. So here is the unit for length in SI system and which is meters, not centimeters, not inches, but meters. The unit for mass is kilo gram, not, not gram as you might consider. And unit for time is seconds. And we also use minutes and hours, but for SI system, it's only seconds. Temperature you might consider it could be Celsius or Fahrenheit, but no, there is a new unit which is called as Kelvin and we will talk about Kelvin more in detail uh, just a little bit later. Amount, amount you might consider grams, could be volume, but no. The main common unit for amount in chemistry is a mole and mole is a universal unit used all over. There's actually uh, a scientist who worked on mole, Avogadro, and we'll talk about him. There's also mole day which will be coming up soon. So anyway, these are the main SI units which we use in chemistry. Now let's find out some other common units which we use. These units may not be direct units. They are derived units from the other units. So one such unit is volume. Now as you know, Volume is length times width times height and we use volume as milliliter if it's a liquid we also use liters and which is also similar to we also use centimeter cube. Pressure is force divided by area so it's F divided by A is the formula to calculate pressure and for pressure there are many units but the one we use commonly are atmosphere and I'd like to use just ATM for atmosphere. Then there is one unit which we call as store. Uh, there's also a unit called Pascal uh, and also there is sometimes people have kilo Pascal. Uh, if you think about putting air in tires, we use also PSI as a unit for uh, pressure too. There's also a unit millimeter of mercury. Uh, so all these units could be considered for pressure and we will talk about the conversion of pressure units too. Then comes energy and energy unit the main one which we use is joules. There's also a unit called ergs but we most commonly use joules as a unit for energy. And then comes temperature. In spite of the fact that Kelvin is the unit which is uh, a main unit for SI system, we also use Celsius and also we use Kelvin. So we got two units there, Celsius and then we got Kelvin. As we talked earlier, we will also do the conversion between 
these both units there so let's move on okay so let's talk about the temperature to units mainly which were used and as we mentioned we have celsius and then we have kelvin now celsius is tied up with the states of water water has freezing point and boiling point and very simply if you look at over here this is celsius a thermometer which we have there okay so in celsius zero degree is the one at which water will be freezing that's a freezing point for water 100 degrees is the boiling point for water so it makes sense to have the celsius but unfortunately it is not physically meaningful unit and we will talk about why it is not a physically meaningful unit the second one which we have is Kelvin and as I said Kelvin is physically meaningful unit it starts with uh, 0 Kelvin but you know what that 0 Kelvin matches with negative 273 degrees Celsius there so we have a difference between Celsius and Kelvin there the absolute zero which we have here is a different unit let's talk about some let's talk about some important concepts about the temperature and the kinetic energy in chemistry and chemical molecules so what happens is in chemistry we consider the substance is made up of atoms molecules or else these particles are constantly in random motion and because of that they all have an energy which is called as kinetic energy so kinetic energy is because of the energy due to the motions this is the energy of motion and every particle will have a certain amount of energy when we take the average of all the kinetic energies of all the particles what we get is called a temperature of that substance so that means we can say temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of atoms or molecules or particles in simple way uh, for uh, the particular substance average kinetic energy the kinetic energy has a formula which is half m stands for mass and v square v is the velocity with which the particles are traveling now you have to keep in mind that a mass cannot be negative also velocity cannot be negative so that means we are always considering that a substance will be having a positive kinetic energy so which means a temperature value should be really positive so what happens is when we use celsius if some temperature is below zero degree that is not physically meaningful and we will talk again how we have to go below zero degree for measuring temperature of certain substances like gases there so keep in mind celsius is not physically meaningful the scale and kelvin is the one which will be physically meaningful scale so moving on to the next one now here's the conversion between celsius and kelvin it is a very simple way to remember 0 degree celsius is equal to 273 kelvin okay and this is already there in our formula charts which is easy now we have to convert from celsius to kelvin or kelvin to celsius this is the way i remember the conversion because there is a time when you will be adding and there is a time you will be subtracting that 273 to that particular value what I remember is Celsius stands for Charlie and Kelvin we can make it as Kevin and actually there was some time ago I had two students in my class named Charlie and Kevin and Kevin was the older brother so think about that Kevin is an older brother of Charlie if Kevin is older brother Kevin is taller bigger than Charlie so always Kevin or Kelvin will be higher if it's higher you're going to add and if it's we are going to go from Kelvin to Charlie you're going to go lower because Charlie is younger brother so let's see here this is 
going from Celsius to Kelvin. You are converting to Kelvin. You are going to the older brother Kelvin. That means you will be adding that number to 73 and you get the answer. Whereas when you go from Kelvin to Celsius or to Charlie, you are going to younger brother. So you will be subtracting 273 and this works very well for calculations. So let's see some calculations which we have here. We have in this table some conversion to perform and then let's begin the first one. It's negative 167 degrees Celsius. You are going to go from Celsius to Kelvin. Kelvin, Kevin is older brother. So what we need to do is you need to add that magic number which is plus 273 and when we add that whatever answer we get will be in Kelvin. So I believe I got the answer as 106, 106 Kelvin, degrees Kelvin. Okay. Next one which we have is 1100 degrees Celsius again. We are going from Charlie to Kevin or we are going to go from Celsius to uh, Kelvin. So we will add 273 to that and the answer which we are going to get with that is I believe I got the answer 1373 degrees Kelvin. So see how simple it is. Now let's see if you can find out the answer for this. It's simple right? You are going to go from Kelvin to Celsius. You're going to go to younger brother. So what would you be doing? 321 and you will subtract that 273. So when you subtract that number, the answer which I am getting here is, I believe I got the answer 48, I'm sorry, it's 48 degrees Kelvin is the answer. So just by adding or subtracting the number, we can do the conversion. The only thing to keep in mind again is which way you are going and as I said I like to remember with Charlie as younger brother and Kevin as older brother and that works very well. So let's move on to the next uh, calculations. This calculation is for finding the difference in temperatures and let's find out how we come up with the answer. There is some important concept here. How much does the temperature change in Celsius? If it changes from 20 degrees Celsius to 255 Kelvin. Okay, we usually use the uh, sign delta for change. Okay, and it's always the change is always final minus initial. So you can just say delta temperature T will be temperature final. I can say TF and then it will be temperature initially, which we have there. In this case, we will do calculation in Kelvin. So the first temperature we have is 20 degrees Celsius. If you want to convert that to Kelvin, you're going to add 273. When we add 273, what we end up getting is 293 Kelvin. So that's your temperature, which is from 20 to 255. So that is your initial temperature Ti or I can just say T1. And then second one which we have T2 is 255 and that is already in Kelvin. So your job will be to find delta T for both which is 255 minus 293 and that comes out to be okay so that comes out to be negative 38 Kelvin. Okay, that's our one answer. We got this answer. Now let's do other way. We can use the calculation in Celsius now. So I am not going to convert 20 degrees Celsius. That remains as it is. That is your T1. And I'm going to convert 255 Kelvin into Celsius. We are going to go from Kelvin to Celsius, going to younger brother Charlie. That means we are going to subtract so we get minus 273 here which gives you the answer 273 will be okay you're going to convert okay this is which gives you the answer negative 18 
and that is your T2. So your delta T will be T2 minus T1, it will be negative 18 minus T1, negative 20, which comes out to be negative 38. Okay, and now it is degrees Celsius. So look what happened. Whatever we are doing, either in Kelvin or Celsius, the difference in temperature is still same, negative 38. So that's an important concept. If you are finding the difference in temperature, you can figure out the difference value will be same. Okay, this slide talks about absolute zero, where everything, look at that, everything freezes. If everything freezes, that means nobody can move. So if particles do not move, they have zero kinetic energy. And we already discussed that average kinetic energy is nothing but temperature. So that temperature will be called as absolute zero. Ideally, we call this as a temperature where we can obtain a perfect pure crystal which exhibits exactly perfect order. Or we can also say this is the point when everything stops, all motion stops in chemistry. It's like a day off in school, uh, no work, nothing at all. Then these are just some interesting figures. So I just put those figures over there that we have artificially we recreated absolute zero which is 0 0.100 nano kelvin and which is that particular value over there. Now just interesting thing is on the surface of earth we got lowest temperature is only that which is actually 184 kelvin. So think about that uh, when can we have absolute zero probably never right.